They said, what do you want to put on the title? The first film. You put down producer. And I said, it's just a word. What does it matter? <laughs> they said, no, you're the director. I said, okay. Call me that. My start was really not uh, a kid with a camera. I was just an ordinary kid. But I had one advantage, I think, that helps me to be sitting here today, and that was boredom. I think it's kind of essential to be bored. You know, message, I, I really am not a, um, I really just uh, start off by wanting to tell this story. I don't like teachers, I don't really like preachers, I'm suspicious of it. I was a very bad student at school, bad at university, and so I started work and then went to Europe. And that trip was, uh, was a life-changing uh, journey because on the ship there was no entertainment five weeks from Sydney to Piraeus. So by the time I got off the ship in Greece, I knew I would never go back to the job I'd had, which was in real estate, but that it was going to be a life as an entertainer. You first meet the cinema as a child. And as that child, the world is very mysterious. And so that first film you see, the big screen, the actors moving around, it's, it's full of wonder and and not knowing quite what it is. The genre is confining and, and as a concept. Who knows what it really is? Casting is, is the major thing, I think, because of the close-up, which of course is the great invention of cinema. You know, we could have CGI, 3D, blah, blah, blah. But the great discovery was that. When you make a film, you have to be, have all the doors and windows open because wonderful things come to you. A guy came in one day, I had a husband and a plumber. And in came somebody for the husband and he said, ah, okay, shall I start? And I said, why did you? <sighs> he said, oh, not nothing, excuse, forgive me. He said, I just, I'm, I, I'm always the husband, <laughs> never the plumber. <laughs> and I said, well, do you want to read the plumber? He said, well, I'd love to. And he got the part. It's wonderful for, really, for directors to write. In a sense, we are writers. I know today it's very tempting to say, to give the child, the bright child who wants to be a director, a little camera. But maybe better to give them a pen. Look at all the great works. They've got Renoir on next week. Have you seen a Renoir? I said, no. Oh, you go and see Renoir. Yeah, I've heard he's great, yeah. And then there's John Ford next month. And I decided not to see them, because I knew I was going to be inhibited if I saw them. It was, like, it was like that, so if that's your Hitchcock, I would always come over like this and like that, like a priest and, you know, like a confession. And anyway, the AD knelt beside Mr. Hitchcock. <laughs> Why are we waiting? And he said, the sun, Mr. Hitchcock. And I thought, wow, even Alfred Hitchcock has to wait for the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the editing period um, is what I call, I just call it the rough cut blues now. Um, there's a Peggy Lee song. Is that all there is? Because if that's all there is, I'll just keep dancing. So I waited till I'd made three films. But at the end of the last wave, I took a year off. And for one year, just worked my way through their collection. I think, I know what you're doing here. You know, I think I know what you're doing. Or, so of course, a lot. I don't know how you did that. But I think I could work it out a bit. I once made a documentary way back, and, and it was a, a scene with a, in Sydney with a Japanese potter. The potter made, served a long apprenticeship and made only utilitarian objects and didn't sign it. He said, in, in Japan, we just make these pots, and every now and again, the gods choose to touch your hands, and that is a work of art. The idea is just out of your reach. The success is just past these fingertips. And we all need to all stretch to pull it down. 
I think to some degree you make a film in a kind of trance. And one of the attempts you have make, making a film, I think, is for me, is to be uh, not self-conscious, not weighed down by the past. And so I thought, well, I'll just keep working like that craftsman, like that potter. So it was like a painter, I think, you know, when you go into, you're starting painting and you go in and copy the masters. I didn't actually go and shoot stuff that way, but I think in my head, I followed their brush strokes. <laughs> Thank you.